Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Mensa and Destiny. Please, if you are new here, kindly subscribe to my channel. And if you have been watching my videos and if not yet subscribed, please kindly subscribe for us to grow the mathematics community. In this lesson, we are going to look at how to prove the derivative of the inverse sine function or the arc sine function. And then we also take uh, some examples on how to differentiate the inverse sine functions. Join me as uh, we go through this lesson. Now, the inverse sine function denoted by sine inverse of x is defined as y equal to sine inverse of x if and only if x equal to sine y. We know that the sine function is a continuous function. So it is not a one-to-one -one function. It's not a one-to-one -one function. So to make it a one-to-one -one function so that we get its inverse, we have to restrict its domain to negative one less than or equal to x, less than or equal to positive function. So this is the domain of the inverse sine function and its range will be negative pi on two less than or equal to y, less than or equal to pi on two. So this is the domain of the inverse sine function and this is the range of the inverse sine function. Now, if we restrict the domain of the sine function to this and then the ring to this, we will get its inverse. So now, how do we differentiate x equal to sine y? We are going to use the implicit differentiation. If you have not watched my video on uh, implicit differentiation, check the description for that video. So here we have sin y equal to x. So using implicit differentiation, if we differentiate sin, we get cosine y and then we bring dy on dx since we are differentiating implicitly with respect to x. If we differentiate x with respect to x, we get 1. To differentiate both sides by cos and y, we get the derivative of y with respect to x equal to 1 divided by cos and y. Now, from basic trigonometric identity, cos squared y plus sin squared y is equal to 1. We have cos squared y equal to 1 minus sin squared y. And here we have cos cosine y squared equal to 1 minus sin y squared. So if you find square root of both sides, we have cos y is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus sin y squared. But if you look for the definition of y or the interval of y, it means that cos and y is greater than or equal to 0 on this interval. So here we are going to have cos and y is equal to positive square root of 1 minus sin y squared. Very simple as that. So here we take the derivative of y with respect to x is equal to 1 divided by square root of 1 minus sin y squared. Now let's come to this point. If I want sin y squared, if I square this and I square this, I have x squared equal to sin y squared. So in place of sin y squared, I'm going to have 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared, since sin y squared equal to x squared as the derivative of y with respect to x. And here, now y is equal to sine inverse of x. So we can say that 
the derivative of sine inverse of x is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, now if we replace x by g of x, that is a given function, if y is a, a factor, if x is a differentiable function, let's say that if we take x equal to g of x, where g of x is a differentiable function, then we are going to have y equal to sine inverse of g of x, and that we have x equal to, sorry, we have g of x equal to sine y. Now, if we differentiate this implicitly, we are going to have g prime of x to be equal to cosine of y dy on dx. And then we have j prime of x equal to dy on dx. And then we divide here by cosine of y. We've already uh, simplified this to get a uh, square root of this. So here we are going to have this one as j prime of x on um, square root of 1 minus sine y squared equal to dy on dx. Okay, so here sine y is equal to g of x. So if I square this and then square this, sine y squared will become g of x squared. So here it will be j prime of x divided by square root of 1 minus j of x squared equal to the derivative of y with respect to x. And what is y? y is the sine inverse of g of x. So let's put that one also down. We are going to have the derivative of sine inverse of a differentiable, a function that is differentiable will give us the derivative of that function divided by the square root of 1 minus the function squared. Very simple as that. Now remember that if we write sine to the power this one, it does not mean 1 divided by sine x. We are just using this to show that this is the, the inverse or the act sine function. So, in order not to be confused with this, some books write sine inverse of x as act sine. So, we are to use the act sine or the sine inverse. Now, let's take some examples and this and then we are good to go. Okay, so now, um, let me take this marker and then let me take this marker. Okay, this marker will help us. Now let's consider this example. If you have y equal to sine inverse of t divided by 3 then the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to now we have t of 3 sorry t on 3 equal to g of t so what we have to do we have to differentiate t divided by 3 and divide it uh, by square root of 1 minus t divided by 3 squared as what we have there. So we are going to take the derivative of t divided by 3 with respect to t divided by square root of 1 minus t divided by 3 squared. So the marker I went and picked. 
is not coming. I have the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to 1 on 3. That is, if we differentiate t on 3, you get 1 on 3. Remember that t on 3 is the same as 1 on 3 times t. So if we differentiate, we get 1 on 3. All divided by square root of 1 minus t squared divided by 9. Hmm. Now, let's simplify this. This is the same as 1 divided by 3 times the square root of 9 times 1 is 9 minus t squared all divided by 9. Very simple as that. Now, if you have square root of a divided by b, the same as square root of a divided by square root of b. So this is the same as writing 1 divided by square root of 9 minus t squared divided by square root of 9 times 3. So this is the same as 1 divided by square root of 9 minus t squared on 3 times 3. And here the 3 will cancel the 3. Wow. So here our final answer is going to be 1 divided by square root of 9 minus t squared. Which is also the same as 1 divided by square root of 3 plus t times 3 minus t. Because this is the difference of two squares. That is 9 minus t squared is the same as 3 squared minus t squared. And that will give us 3 plus t times 3 minus t. Very simple as that. Now let's take the next example. If I have if I have y equal to square root of 1 minus x squared times sine inverse of x. Now for this one, we are going to use the product rule. So let's use the product rule here. We have the derivative of y with respect to x to be equal to the derivative of square root of 1 minus x squared with respect to x times sine inverse of x plus the square root of 1 minus x squared times the derivative of sine inverse of x. So here, how do we differentiate? square root of 1 minus x squared. This is the same as 1 minus x to the power half. If you have not watched my video on how to differentiate using chain rule, check the description. So half will come in front. We differentiate minus x to get negative 1. Then you have 1 minus x. Oh, it is x squared rather. So we are going to have 1 minus x squared. So half will come in front. We differentiate minus x squared to get minus 2x times 1 minus x squared. Then subtract 1 from the positive get negative half. So this will give us negative x all divided by 1 minus x squared to the power positive half. Now this will cancel this. If 1 minus x squared 1 minus half become the denominator. The x, sorry, the power will be positive. And this is the same as minus x divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. So here we have minus x sine inverse of x divided by square root of 1 minus x squared plus square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of sine inverse of x is 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. You see that this one will cancel this. Okay. So for the chain rule, check the description for my video on chain rule for better understanding. So this is the same as minus x sine inverse of x 
divided by square root of 1 minus x squared plus 1. Very, very simple as that. As our, our final answer. Now, we can multiply this by that and then they all have the same uh, denominator. If this one goes here, to become minus x sine inverse of x plus 1 minus x squared under square root all divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay. Let's take the next uh, example. The next example is this one. If I have sine inverse of 2x minus 1, y equal to this. So in this case, I'm going to have dy on dx to be equal to d dx 2x minus 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 2x minus 1 squared. And this will give me, if I differentiate this, I get 2 all divided by square root of 1 minus 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. Wow. So 2x squared will give us 4x squared. 2 times 2x minus this will give us minus 4x. Negative 1 squared will give us positive 1. So this will give us 2 divided by square root of 1 minus 4x plus, sorry, 4x squared plus 4x minus 1. And this will be equal to 2 divided by square root of minus. 4x squared plus 4x. Very simple as that. 1 minus 1 will be 0. Now, we can factorize uh, 4 out. Here, we can factorize 4 out. So, here we are going to have our answer to be equal to square root of 4. Sorry. 2 divided by square root of 4 times square root of less than 13 equals x minus x squared wow and this will give us 2 divided by square root of 4 is 2 and we take square root of x minus x squared which will be equal to 1 divided by square root of x minus x squared very very simple as that as our final answer this one is from simple uh, indices that is set if I have a uh, root of 4 times root of minus x squared plus x is the same as root of 4 times minus x squared plus x then the 4 will multiply this I'll get this the 4 will multiply this I'll get that so that is how uh, I simplified it now let's take uh, the next example the next example if I have uh, y equal to sine inverse of square root of x then i have the derivative of y with respect to x to be equal to d dx square root of x all divided by square root of 1 minus square root of x squared 
So if we differentiate root x, you get 1 divided by 2 root x. That is, if we let our v equal to square root of x, our v equal to x to the power half, the ratio of v with respect to x will give us half, then we subtract 1 to get negative 1 out of 2. So this will give us 1 divided by 2 root x. All divided by square root of 1 minus x. So here, we are going to have this to be equal to one divided by two root x times the square root of one minus x. And here, the root x times this will give us one divided by two square root of x times one minus x. And this will give us one divided by two root x minus x squared. Very, very simple as that. Yes, that is it. Now, let's take uh, the next example and then we are done with it. If I have y equal to e to the power x squared times sine inverse of x. So here we are going to use the product rule. So here the derivative of y with respect to x will give us, we differentiate this, we are going to get 2x e to the power x squared. Watch my video from the description on the derivative of exponential functions times sine inverse of x plus we maintain e to the power x squared then if we differentiate sine inverse of x we get 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared as we have here so this will give us we have e to the power x squared e to the power x squared so if I plus e to the power x squared out we're going to have 2x times sine inverse of x plus 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, assuming we don't want the sine inverse of x, we can make it the subject here, uh, dy on dx. Yeah, if we make sine inverse of x the subject, we are going to have y divided by e to the power x squared equal to sine inverse of x. So let's put it there. We have uh, e to the power x squared into bracket 2x times y divided by e to the power x squared plus 1 on square root of 1 minus x squared. And this is the same as e to the power x squared times 2xy divided by e to the power x squared plus 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. You can do it like that if you want to remove this one from there. That will be very very simple as that. Wow! So now, if we had substituted it here, the e to the power x squared would have cancelled the e to the power x squared. So here, if I want to go back, see so that this will multiply this and they will cancel. And we have this on top of this. Let's do that one and see. If you want to go back, like if we had substituted the sine inverse of x at this point, we will have 2xy plus e to the power x squared divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. We have found this. Okay, so we have this, this or that. Any of them uh, is nice. Okay, 
Thank you for watching and please subscribe to my channel. Bye bye.